Ooh, that's embarrassing. It's embarrassing moments, time, Jack. Yeah. Have you got one? Yeah. But I don't think I get embarrassed easily. Okay. So what might be embarrassing for somebody might not be that embarrassing for me. I kind of when you told me you need to come on with a embarrassing story, I was like, well, I've not really done anything embarrassing recently, to me. But something I do embarrassing probably happens to me like every day. Well, Daniel Mosa was similar uh, because he his dad <laughs> is his dad. Yeah. He grew up not really being, being able to be embarrassed because yeah. he was hardened to it. But are you not? easily embarrassed because you've done so many embarrassing things you've just got used to it or you I just don't do it. embarrassing things me i think it's just like that's just a part of my life now and just like i do do embarrassing things but i've just become desensitized to awkward situations i think so anyway um it's good 10 years ago now that um, i was at a house party with a friend of mine celebrating his 21st and well i think it was 21st might have been younger anyway Cut a long story short, there was another guy there who I um, took a quite a liking to, who did, we wasn't out of the closet Ooh, okay. at that point, but um, we did like each other. Anyway, so um, I think I had to, I was basically working um, the next day at very early in the morning for um, a supermarket at 5am to 8am for the, doing the dairies there. So basically, I, have, I thought, like, you know, I'm going to leave this party early-ish because, you know, I've got work. Yeah. I'm being a responsible young man that I am. Well, even back then. Even back then. So this is, I think, about 2010, I think. Um, we'll leave the party early. Exchanged numbers with this guy, as, as you do. Didn't uh, kiss him or anything. Basically, and I went home. So it was only quite a short walk to my house. Anyway, he gave me a, um, a call. Not long after I've kind of got into bed, he was like, "Can I come over?" And I was like, "Yeah, okay, yeah, that sounds like a good um, idea." Not that you're easy in any way. No, um, I was probably playing hard to get for about five seconds or something. <laughs> but he's very, very um, good looking and out my league, and okay. I'm pretty sure isn't gay now. Oh. Um, but anyway, um, quite muscular young lad. I was like, well, "Who am I to turn this down?" Sure. So we. Actually went back to my bed and we didn't actually do anything sexual, not even kiss, I think, because we were both a bit too drunk. We just kind of talked and... He and you have worked the next day as well. Yeah, and I have worked the next day. Yeah. He ends up falling asleep and I'm like, shit, like, what do I do? Because, like, I've got work in a couple hours at 5 a.m. to 8 a.m. And I've got, like, a drunk boy in my bed. And I was living at home at the time, so my mother, you know, she normally does after a party, would check on me. So I was like, right, what am I going to do in this situation so I came up with this plan that I will lock him in the room and then because I've got two keys basically so I'll put a key on the floor next to a piece of paper and a drink of water <laughs> and I'll say like so thoughtful yeah exactly they're saying look like you know you've woke up in a strange house kind of thing uh, I'll be back at eight o'clock anyway which after a night out isn't actually that late is it it sounds like you drugged him or something it does yeah but I basically had like left him a key. I've locked him in, locked him in the bedroom door. <laughs> okay. And I've left him a key, right? So I've got a key, so I can come into the bedroom door. He's also got a key if he wants to leave. And I text his phone as well, and I said, "Look, like you know, I've got to go to work. I'll be back at eight. There's a key there if you want to leave. But if not, I'll be back at eight o'clock. Also, a pint of water because I understand that you drank a lot. Because I didn't want my mother going in in the morning being like, "Who's this? Who's a strange man? Yeah. yeah. So anyway, I go to work as the young responsible man that I am sure and um, very long three hours because I'm thinking shit 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 there's a mm. boy in my bedroom so I um, did my shift and um, came home and when I got home the door was still locked so I'm thinking great he's in there isn't, then isn't he because door's still locked if, if he's gone somewhere he would have you know left it unlocked and left it unlocked and, yeah. and left kind of thing so I opened the door and he wasn't in the bed so I was like well, what's happened here and I looked to my right as I went into my bedroom and there was the wide open window and curtains flapping in the wind. So this poor boy had um, woke up and panicked and jumped out the window. I hadn't even seen the glass of water or the note that you left no, him in the key. or the text message that I texted him onto his phone and jumped out the window and sprayed his ankle. No. Yes. You found this out later? Yes. When I kind of like texted him like, where the fuck are you? <laughs> 
So, what? Why was that his? Was he so drunk that he didn't even remember going to your house? I think so. I don't think I've ever been that drunk that I don't remember how I got somewhere. Yeah, um, but this story I kind of like told for quite some time and kept the poor boy's identity. Sure. Yeah. Well, quite, you'd have to. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I was quite embarrassed as well because I was like the guy who traps young boys in his <laughs> bedroom <laughs> and then makes them jump out of a window. And he sprained his ankle as well. Uh, doing so. So did it ever amount to anything or was that, did that seem well, its fate? Yeah. The thing is I've seen him quite a few times out in our local nightclub and I'd been like, hi, how are you? And he'd be like, give me a hug and say like, I'm only gay for you. And I'm like, but you've got a girlfriend. So yeah. As, as he limps away. As he limps away. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Which, um, it's a very funny, embarrassing story. Yeah. I, I like to imagine the, what the neighbours would have thought of that. Seeing yeah. this guy leap out, out the window. Yeah. 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 And uh, escape down the road. Well, what I, I suppose it wasn't so much embarrassing for you. It was more you embarrassing. Well, yeah, it was embarrassing for you yeah. because of the reputation that you might have got. Yeah. But yeah, it's sort of embarrassing for him for, you know... <laughs> for, for how it ended. Yeah, and I'm not sure if he'd actually told anybody how he sprained his ankle. Oh. Being like, well, this Jeffrey Dahmer gay man had <laughs> basically <laughs> trapped me in a bedroom and I've yeah. and only just been able to escape. I saw a barrel of acid in the corner yeah, of the room exactly. and, a, and a hacksaw. Yeah. yeah. Oh, well, that's, that's a good one. Yeah. I do like that one. It's different to anything we've had so far as well. Yeah, 